Hi, Mike Gibson, Mark Vinaka, and we are here with Access Points talking about the update to the aortic disease guidelines. Give us the update in three minutes, Mark. So these guidelines have really changed the framework for aortic care. The last ones for thoracic disease were in 2010, and it's been a long time. There's been a lot of research, so updates in terms of genetics, updates in terms of different thresholds for intervention, actually intervening earlier at smaller dimensions for some patients, and really focusing on personalized care depending on the patient's family history, their genetics, whether they're syndromic, and then other features. So it's gotten far more nuanced and far more complex, but really an excellent summary of the data in a way that people can hopefully digest and implement in practice. Any key take-home messages for our docs out there? I mean, what things do they need to know that will change their practice? So what you need to know for your practice is one, you need to make sure your imaging is done by readers that are going to use the guidelines because there are very specific ways to measure and places to measure, and the reporting standards have changed. So that's number one. You need to team up with the right imagers. You need to get support for genetic diagnosis and genetic counseling. because So what kinds of things are we testing for now? So we're testing for mutations both for syndromic patients, things that for patients like Marfan or Lois Dietz, but also non-syndromic patients. And there are a number of genetic mutations where, where people look normal, but they have a bad family history, or they have a specific mutation that really manifests as thoracic aortic disease, and you need to know how to counsel patients and how that impacts when you intervene for their aneurysm. And all those tests are listed. All those tests are listed. Great. Anything else? Well, I will say that uh, when I put down the guideline the first time, I felt a little bit overwhelmed. There's a lot there. It's much more complex than it was, and I really do think that aligning with a multidisciplinary aortic program is probably going to make a lot of sense for practitioners that can, or even if there's not one at your center virtually doing so, because you need a lot of support to integrate all the information in these very, very sophisticated guidelines. Mark, thanks for the update, and thanks to all of you for joining us here live for Access Points. <laughs>